You only need to know me. I will be the one. Who is going to die on Egghead Island? It's that time of the year again, or really that time of the arc in One Piece where we speculate who Oda will kill off next. Especially with the end of chapter 1103 and the arrival of Bonnie's adoptive father, Kuma. But to be fair, we already have one character that has died, or we've been led to believe he is dead, and that is Shaka Vegapunk. Killed, we are told. Shot in the head, we are shown. By the Vegapunk satellite called York. And we know that Vegapunk has been a prime target for execution by the world government. So let's start there. The original Stella Vegapunk has been ordered for execution by the Gorosei. The five elders of the world apparently have no further use for Vegapunk, tasking Kizaru to eliminate Vegapunk which clearly did not work out given Vegapunk and Kizaru's shared history or friendship together. So now we see that Saturn has made it his mission to personally finish the job. Saturn targeting Vegapunk for elimination because he knows too much and I would imagine to make sure the world government's number one enemy to make sure the revolutionaries can't get their hands on Vegapunk. Since we know Vegapunk and Dragon have a close connection, Vegapunk and Kuma even having a close bond. The arrival of Kuma though juxtaposed with the tremendous sadness of Vegapunk for having contributed to Kuma's current predicament. Great men in One Piece, especially those considered the world's greatest, or the world's whatever, such and such title, People like this often having a moment where they stand out, stand up, a big speech, a defiant moment that speaks to why Oda wrote them as characters in the first place. A creature or a man, even a swordsman, a doctor, and yes, a scientist. Maybe Vegapunk dies on Egghead Island and we get a speech from him about the purpose of science, what science should be used for. Something along the lines of bettering people's lives and world peace. Vegapunk's dream. But the original Stella Vegapunk was at first the target of Joey Bonnie when the arc began. Bonnie planned on killing Vegapunk if you remember to avenge her father because she personally blamed Vegapunk for altering his mind. Erasing his memories and free will, essentially killing him which we now know was really the work of Saint J. Garcia Saturn, a scientist in his own right. But after receiving Kuma's memories, Bonnie now knows the truth and seems to have forgiven Vegapunk for his involvement, Bonnie turning her sights on Saturn. In chapter 1103, Bonnie mentions that the true enemy is him. Those to blame for the evil of this world are not the marines or pirates or revolutionaries, your everyday criminal sent to impel down or mad scientists. No, the real villains of the One Piece story have always been those pulling the strings from above, the Gorosei, the five elders and the one that pulls their strings if you want to go there, the king of the world, Imu, Narona. But given Saturn has been identified as the real enemy, the big bad boss of everyone, it's worth noting this panel from chapter 1103, where Oda has written a civilian reading a newspaper pondering about the chances of there being casualties during the so-called siege on Egghead Island. How it would be a miracle if nobody died? Do you think it's likely that somebody does die? You went over Vegapunk, but what about Saturn? Saturn's death, or at the very least, Saturn's defeat, would definitely be an event that shocks the entire world. Is it not also ironic that Saturn continuously refers to others, to humans especially, as insects? As an excuse for treating those that are not celestial dragons so poorly. Imagine if this was foreshadowing, given that Saturn is himself an insect, as in, Saturn's power currently has turned him into some kind of spider, an insect, or better yet, an arachnid. We saw from Kuma's memories that Luffy was training for an attack where he stomps on people. The same rubber attack he used to defeat Arlong, if I'm not mistaken. 
Mind you, the fishmen of Arlong Park were perhaps foreshadowing of the celestial dragons as the fishmen like Arlong believed themselves to be superior to the humans. A superior race. The fishmen had enslaved the humans, including Nami, and killed Nami's adoptive mother. Now we see the celestial dragons enslaving humans, the Gorose Saturn enslaving Bonnie's adoptive father Kuma, erasing his mind, killing him, and also denying Bonnie's freedom of movement, the same as Arlong did to Nami. The person that freed Nami from Arlong was Luffy, and the person that will likely free Bonnie from Saturn is Luffy as well. Luffy possibly using the same move that Kuma saw younger Luffy use in his memories, to crush Saturn like a bug. And so, in psychology, Saturn's commentary on insects is what they call projection. We'll come back to Saturn shortly. Now, there are some miscellaneous options for who might die on Egghead Island before we consider a final, more legitimate candidate for the major Egghead Island death. First, Kizaru. Kizaru's close relationship with Vegapunk has led to repeated failures to deal with the Vegapunk problem as I call it. Kizaru has had so many opportunities to kill Vegapunk and still hasn't done so. It's clear that he doesn't really want to. And in chapter 1103, we see Kizaru thinking about, or worrying, over Sentamaru and Bonnie. What will happen to them? His old, dear friends from the past. The justice of a marine. The unclear justice of Kizaru. What does Kizaru truly believe and will it become clear or clearer soon? Justice changes shape depending on where you stand. Kizaru has had a front row seat to the evil of the world government and now he has the opportunity to do the funniest thing of all time for those of you that know about that meme. Not really funny but moving, emotional is a better word I guess. Betraying Saturn, making things right for his own complicity in this current happening, this current set of circumstances, finally standing up for clear justice. And in doing so, we might just see another admiral go down, making further room for a new generation of marines. Aside from Kizaru, there is the satellite Vegapunk known as York. The world government wants her alive, but did seem willing to do away with her at first at one point. York could very well become a accidental casualty of this conflict. Maybe York escapes on her own. Maybe the world government gets away with York after suffering a significant loss here. Or maybe the Blackbeard pirates on Egghead Island steal York for some reason unbeknownst to us at the moment. There is also Rob Lucci who was fighting Zoro before all of this. Is it possible their fight picks up again? Could Rob Lucci be killed by Zoro to end this character arc? Or is there more for us to see from Lucci? I think many of us were surprised when he teamed up with the Straw Hats, so who knows what other surprises we'll get from Lucci in the future, if Lucci makes it off the island alive. And finally, Jewelry Bonnie. It's likely Bonnie does something to help defeat or weaken Saturn. But in doing so, I wonder if it might cause her sapphire scale disease to return. Who knows exactly what that protective charm or necklace Kuma gave her for her birthday is, or what it is for. I'd also add that Bonnie has been building up her imitation of the sun god Nika and Luffy's Delvu power by perceiving various possible or alternative or distorted futures of herself. Has she been thinking only of Gear 3? Or given what Saturn says about Bonnie failing to draw the connection between Luffy's white warrior appearance in Gear 5, and the story of Nika, that Bonnie was losing faith, beginning to doubt herself that Nika would come save her, when Bonnie's ability relies heavily on belief, rarely even telling us when training Luffy that not doubting belief in yourself is our greatest strength. Maybe Bonnie eventually draws the connection then, realizes Nika is real, Nika is already here, and envisions herself in Gear 5 to help Luffy defeat Saturn. Or maybe Bonnie, similar to Kuma, finally starts to believe in herself and her own future, no longer needing to rely on Nika. 
Now the final Agate Island death candidate, Kuma. Remember that all of Vegapunk's creations are flawed. There is a flaw, a glitch, an error to the functioning or design of just about everything Vegapunk has ever built. We were told this when Bonnie used the lightsaber on Vegapunk and attracted those bugs or insects to attack them. And then Vegapunk told us about the flaw in the cloning of Kaido's Delphu power. The mistake. The 1% error, you could call it. Momonosuke becoming a pink dragon instead of a blue dragon. And I would even add that when we look at Vegapunk's satellite clones, we see that there is a flaw there too, perhaps. And given one of the clones betrayed him, maybe we can say York's personality was flawed. Even if that greed or selfish desire that we owe everything to was predetermined. So maybe it's better to say Vegapunk's genius is flawed. That even a genius is prone to human error and can make mistakes. And I'd imagine this is no different for Kuma. That in designing Kuma, Vegapunk has likely made a major mistake. That there is a big flaw in Kuma's design. That Kuma's mind was not entirely erased, perhaps. Could this explain why Kuma is acting up again? Moving of his own accord, once again displaying free will. Disobeying the commands programmed into him. Especially, I would imagine, to never harm a celestial dragon. Or will we see Saturn in chapter 1104, or thereafter, command Kuma to stop? Since chapter 1103 curiously ends with Kuma about to punch Saturn. But we don't see Kuma's fist make contact. A climactic finish would have been Kuma sending Saturn flying with the blood of giants, the strength of a cyborg, and the spirit of a father enraged by his daughter's tears. But no, all Oda shows us is Kuma about to punch Saturn, and we are left with a cliffhanger. So you have to ask whether the golden rule that you must never punch a celestial dragon, will it be upheld? It does seem as if Oda alludes to this in chapter 1092, with Kuma's attack on the Holy Land as several celestial dragons complain about Akainu allowing Kuma to hurt them. That a lowly slave should never even dare to think about putting their hands on the gods. Or maybe Kuma will finally get to put some paws on Saturn, holding him accountable for all he's been through these past few decades. Saturn has yet to show us what he can really do, it's all been spider legs, I am strong and can crush you easily. I'll just paralyze you and make your head explode. There's been no confirmation as to what Saturn's Adele fruit is yet, and usually that happens when the character transforms for the first time or when they use an ability or enter a new transformation that provides the opportunity to explain the character's true ability. So Saturn has not gone all out yet, that's obvious. It's worth asking who Oda is saving that for. Saturn's true power. Could it be Kuma? And given how badly damaged Kuma currently is, I'm not so sure. But Gear 5 Luffy, who is currently recovering, is a more likely option. When Saturn does eventually go deeper into his hidden bag of abilities, then and only then can I see Kuma at risk of dying. Something that crossed my mind for Kuma even is him having a Dragon Ball Android 16 moment, for those of you that remember, where Saturn would be Cell, killing Android 16, and Luffy would be Gohan, becoming enraged thereafter, maybe even showing us a new ability with Gear 5. Whether it was a fishman being shot by the celestial dragon St. Charles during Sabaody, or Kuma being regarded as a slave since birth, and now a malfunctioning cyborg, I don't think Luffy would take too kindly to the people that helped him being hurt, even worse, killed. There is also the self-destruct mechanism or button that was hinted at being placed in Akuma. If this self-destruct mechanism still works, Kuma's self-destruction and the consequent explosion, depending on how large, might even prevent the world government from getting its hands on Vegapunk's technology, such as punk records or the energy fuel and blueprints of the Mother Flame. Although, Kuma's body is so badly damaged after the attack on the Holy Land, and fighting a Kainu, and the injuries sustained trying to reach and protect Bonnie, his daughter, here on Egghead. Now by the end of this conflict, it's likely Kuma finally gets to rest. 
the machine powering off for one last time for good. But it's possible that nobody dies, continuing Oda's controversial practice of resurrecting the dead. Either immediately or sometime after we were led to believe said person was dead and gone, only for them to come back to life. Being back to Pell surviving the bomb explosion of Alabasta, and all the other characters that went out with a bang, only to pop up again later. For one, Kizaru has had so many opportunities again as I mentioned to kill Vegapunk and still hasn't done so, which makes me wonder if Sentamaru will also survive, or will Egget Island be the end of both Sentamaru and Shaka Vegapunk as characters in the story. Kuma's memories are now believed to be gone after Bonnie took them. For all intents and purposes, Kuma is already dead, as Saturn and others repeatedly remind us. But this ties into that famous line, that a man only dies when they're forgotten. Kuma hasn't been forgotten, nor has his life been forgotten. Somebody, in this case Bonnie, remembers Kuma's life for him in its entirety. Maybe it's possible Kuma can extract his lost memories from Bonnie and place them back into himself or into the S-Bear Kuma Seraphim that is currently on Egghead. Some of you in the comments have suggested that the S-Bear Kuma Seraphim is essentially a satellite for Kuma akin to the cloned Vegapunks, which leads me to wonder if the main Vegapunk was killed. Could Vegapunk's mind potentially enter into the body of another Vegapunk satellite to survive as well? Maybe the last surviving Vegapunk will be Lilith, or given the mysterious conversation Shaka Vegapunk had with Monkey D. Dragon. Maybe Shaka somehow survives and becomes the new body for the original Stella Vegapunk. Going back to Kuma, something I mentioned in a video about whether Kuma and Dragon would come to Egghead Island was a comparison to the greatest miracle of Jesus. Kuma has been shown taking the pain away from people as a sort of miracle. Not just a hero, but a savior. Like Jesus giving people bread and fish out of thin air. This miracle is known as the feeding of the 5,000, where Jesus miraculously conjured food. The Gospel of John stating that Jesus used five loaves and two fish to feed a village, to feed the hungry whereas we see Kuma using his powers to heal those that are hurting, taking on the pain of man, just as Jesus via the crucifixion is depicted as taking on the sin of all men, dying for mankind's sins, this leading to another great miracle, the greatest miracle of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus after he was killed, a recognition that death was not the end. All this pain Kuma has endured alongside the erasure of his memories. It is an acknowledgement that we are so much more than our bodies, even our minds. That yes, there is a soul. The same soul Vegapunk asked Kuma, how much do you think it weighs? The weight of Kuma's soul has been laid bare for all of us to see. As it says in the scriptures that the love of God was revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. For in the pierced heart of the crucified one, God's love is laid bare for all to see, not with words, but with deeds. The love that drove Kuma to come to Egget Island, the love that drove Kuma to protect his daughter in much the same way that love drove Luffy's brother Ace to die for him, both grateful for the answer they found in the person they loved the most, a brother and a daughter. And so, just as Jesus died for this love, just as Jesus was resurrected, Kuma, who worships at the altar of a Christian-like church with a cross-like symbol of the sun god Nika before him, the gospel preaches that whoever believes in me will never die. Resurrection is possible for you, for Kuma too. Kuma's death in body and mind, his spirit just might be resurrected. Kuma might die, but come back to life in the body of S. Beer, the Seraphim Kuma, akin to an angel, rising just like Jesus rose again. But as usual, we will have to wait and see. 
And don't forget to like the video, comment with your thoughts below, and subscribe. You can also find me on Twitter at the following address, at Vinland Ragnar. My Twitter page is on the screen. Also check out my spoiler channel called Vinland, where I'll be covering the One Piece spoilers as well as turning your comments into videos. And check out the One Piece news channel called D News, where I'll be covering news in the One Piece community for the new year. Again, links will be in the description box and pinned in the comment section below. As always, there's more to come. Until next time.